One of the things I always struggled with a lot as an animation student was keep alive. What to do with a character when they're not actively acting or emoting or doing something. I remember being told a lot as a student that things shouldn't just move because you need motion and you need movement in your shot. You should be able to take a breath, pause, and just let things be still and then you can move after that. But I didn't know what to do in those moments. It wasn't until much later that I realized, oh, like what do all of us do when we're not actively doing something? Well, we're breathing. And breathing is just one example of how to have your character idle and just kind of hang out and not do a lot, but not just totally die on screen with no pixel motion, where it feels like the screen just froze and nothing's working. So today I'm gonna to show you how I animate a breathing slash idle animation cycle. If you follow me on Instagram or Twitter, then you've probably already seen this Link animation that I did a couple of weeks ago. I did this for the Link rig, which if you haven't seen this already, Fantastic, from the same guy who did the Zelda rig. Link below to download both characters. Now what I should have done is just hit record on my screen capture software and then animated, which would have allowed me to just time lapse it for you and show you from nothing to the end product what happened, but I kind of forgot to do that. So instead, we're gonna take the finished product and I'm gonna break it down with you and show you how you could go about animating something like this from scratch. Let's do it. And in case you're new here, hi, I'm Sir Wade. I do a ton of animation stuff on the channel. And if you've just found me recently, or you've seen a couple of my videos and just, you know, cherry picked here and there, take a look through the channel, hit subscribe so you don't miss new stuff, but browse around. There's a ton of stuff that I'm sure can help you with whatever it is you're working on. Or if you want to talk about this stuff live, you can hang out with me over on Twitch three days a week on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, or hop on the Discord where we have over 3,000 artists hanging out, helping each other, giving critiques on work. It's a great community. And the last thing is that if you enjoy my content and you want to help support this channel, a link to my Patreon down below, or your animation tutoring a bunch of behind the scenes stuff. Links to everything are in the notes below. And without further ado, let's do a breathing animation. All right, welcome to Maya. This is the Link Idling animation. And if I turn on all the controls, you can see everything that's going into it. Obviously it didn't start out like this. It started off with Link in a T-pose. And so what I'm gonna do here is just show you how I've kind of structured this shot. Now I'm using animation layers, which if you haven't already seen my video on animation layers, I highly recommend checking that out. You don't need that to do this, but I do recommend considering it if you've animated an entire shot and you wanna add a breathing on top of it. Layers! All right, so the absolute first thing I did when setting up the shot was take Link from a T pose and put him in the pose that I wanted him in for the shot. So I kept a camera perspective window open the whole time so that as I made adjustments on the right, I could see my changes reflected from the camera's point of view. And also keep in mind the 2D pan and perspective tool that this is the actual camera view, but by using the forward slash key and zooming in using that, you can zoom in on your character without actually moving the camera. If you are confused as to what I'm talking about, check out my Maya Tips videos, again, linked below. And with this character specifically, when I was setting up the pose, I thought about the fact that, okay, he's gonna have his hands resting on the sword. I'm not gonna wanna animate both hands independently and then the sword and all that stuff. So I actually set up a constraint system very quickly. So the sword is actually constrained to this locator down here, which controls its position and it's oriented to where the hands are. So as he moves his hand, the sword follows. So with one control, I can manage all of this stuff without having to worry too much about it down the road. So I've got this control. With rig, it's the sub control. And this is actually designed as an IK kind of um, spine bender thing. So by placing it in just the right position and then moving it back and forth, you get this kind of back and forward motion, which go too far and adjusts a lot of things. It should be very subtle. And this is what I landed on where it does move the hips a little bit, but it mainly moves the chest and that's fine for now. I just need to block it in. So that was step number one, get the forward and back rotation of the chest and also make sure that the timing isn't too even. If you look over here, you can see that there's actually a slightly shorter amount of frames whoop, whoop, when he breathes in than when he breathes out. Next on my list was to go to the shoulders. In his case, the clavicle controls are here. So in this case, what you're looking for is to have the shoulders rise and fall with the breath because when you breathe in, your shoulders should also work with that same connected action of everything that's going on in your chest and your torso and your diaphragm and all that. But here's the thing where we start to get into level two of constructing a breathing thing. Most of the time you think about rotating stuff like this and not all rigs have translate controls, but have you ever considered translating or scaling something that you've only ever rotated. For whatever reason, when I was a student, I thought that you were not allowed to scale things. You should never touch scale controls in animation. I don't know why I thought that, like I was gonna break something in the rig. People animate scale all the time. People translate, rotate, and scale things that you would not expect it to move that way in the real world constantly in animation. So in this case, I can rotate the shoulder, but when I go to translate, nothing happens. This was actually locked in the rig. I had to go in and try to unlock it myself, 
which I don't recommend you do if you're just starting out in Maya, if that freaks you out, just don't worry about it. Um, this is probably a more advanced tip for some of you guys. So I actually went into the node editor with this new locator I created, and I just piped in the translation attribute into that clavicle control. That way by moving the locator, it would therefore drive the translation of that shoulder. I did that for each side. So that allowed me to kind of go in and out and up and down in a way that the rotation control wasn't allowing me to do, right? And if you're watching this and you're newer to animation and you're like, holy crap, like what is he doing? That looks terrifying. What the heck are these things? Don't worry about it. I literally never did this as a student. I have not actually done that until this particular shot, which is several years after I ever did breathing stuff for the first time. So. Don't panic if you see this, you don't have to do this, but I'm just showing you different things that I do for different skill levels, so. Cool? Cool. Now it's kind of hard to see exactly what this change is doing because it is so subtle. I remember that these things shouldn't stand out and you shouldn't notice them. They're there for you to feel, not to see. But for emphasis, just to kind of demonstrate to you what I did and why, I'm gonna go ahead and bump this up really aggressively so you can see the effect that this is having. This is obviously way too much, but the idea is that the chest is expanding and contracting with every breath, and it is slightly offset from the up and down forward back of Link's body, which if I, which if I go ahead and dial that up, you're gonna see that things just get all kinds of wacky. So you do not wanna push these things too far because it won't look good. It won't even look like he's breathing. It just looks like you've broken the control and I don't know what this looks like. But back to normal again, you don't even really notice what I did. It's just that there is motion in that full connected area. Now, to be fully honest with you, everything else I did from this point is one of two things. Either me going forward and back or up and down or side to side or scaling up and down. It's that type of same thing on different controls for the most part, or I'm copy pasting. Most of what I did from here on out is take the forward and back of that that body rotation and I copied the curve and I pasted it into the translate Y or the rotate X or the scale Z or whatever it is. I copy pasted that curve into another attribute, maybe offset it a bit, maybe scaled it up and down. Maybe I had to flip it in case it was going the wrong way at the wrong time or something. When you move the chest, that means the shoulders need to move, which means the arms need to move, which means the hands need to move. And going back to the, the shoulders and the chest, the neck is moving, the head is moving. You're affecting the stomach because breathing happens all through the diaphragm, which might affect the hips somewhat. Everything is connected all the way down to the most polished little details, which we'll get to in a second. Um, his hair, his cloth, and so on, we'll talk about. But I want to point out here that things like IK hands versus FK hands, that's gonna change the way you do this. So my example is here, if I move his entire body, you can see his hands are completely locked in place. They're not moving at all. That's something that happened with IK, which means I need to manually move those. And because of the way I set up the constraint, I only need to move one of the hands for this all to work, but I do have kind of a, a forward and back of the, of the hand doing a nice little arc. That way it is still a part of the overall motion. Now, as we start to get into polishing on the character, a few details here is if I didn't leave anything to not move, even the fingers, the fingers are very subtle and probably could use a little bit extra work as well. But if you look here, you can actually see the hand kind of closing and opening a little bit, the thumbs moving. I wanted a little bit of ambient motion. Now I probably could have offset the fingers to not all go in and out at the same time. They should all have a little bit more independence, but I did do that on each hand just so that they weren't completely dead. And if I were actually doing a full shot, it might've been a good idea to have him kind of adjust his hand, shift something around, maybe, you know, reset his hand and get a better grip on the sword, whatever it is. Don't forget about these little details when you're thinking about, ah, the, the shoulders and the chest of breathing, that motion travels all the way down to the fingers, which continuing on to some more polishy stuff, I actually made sure that his um, Sheikah Slate has a little bit of a sway to it. I don't know how realistic this is, but I wanted to add something here. Another thing to not forget are these pull vectors, kind of where the elbows are pointing, for example. If he's gonna be going up and down, you wanna make sure that you've got a little bit of elbow offset. So move those, offset those. With this type of an animation, I don't recommend any kind of a pose to pose or step workflow, at least the way I did it. Uh, this is something that I would recommend just kind of getting your first main motion and then copy pasting, offsetting. Your keys are gonna be all over the place. Do your best to keep track of all of that, but don't be afraid of keys being in different places because you kind of need them to be. You don't want the whole character at the same time. You want everything to feel offset, broken up, organic. So that's important. And before I forget what this control does, I wanna show it to you. This is just another locator that I custom grabbed. I just connected this to another part of the rig 
that allowed me to push and pull the geometry on his chest like this. Which, considering you can't really see his back to see it bend in, doing this really aggressively you can see what it's doing. If I go subtle you can see it just kind of feels like he's taking a breath in his stomach. It's not perfect, but it works and I'm actually really happy with the result. When the character's pretty much good and you now have to think about their clothes and their hair and the more polishy type of stuff like that, first thing is does your rig have controls to adjust those things? And if not, you're going to want to add them yourself if you can. If you're not quite there yet, skill-wise that's okay, don't worry about it, but if you can, or if you have those controls already in your rig, then you should use them. Here's an example of what that looks like with Link. You can see his uh, his cloak has this kind of ambient blowing in the wind type of motion just to feel like he's in a space with wind. Same goes for his hair. There's a little bit of motion on his hair at a different frequency. And if we look at his hair, every section of his hair does kind of the same thing, but at a slightly different time. His whole hair is not all moving at once. It's broken up into this nice organic windy you know, things move at different paces, different rates. And we even have this little thing in the eyes that I've added, which is this little eye specular, which I did show in my Zelda kind of little short animation breakdown. Wake up, Link. So if you missed that video, that's a good one that shows how to integrate your character and an environment and make it feel all part of the same scene. One of the quickest ways to figure out if you need to add that kind of stuff in your shot is to think about where is your character. And if you haven't thought about it, if it's just somewhere in Maya, gray background, just basic play blasting of an exercise that you're doing, just think about this. Are they inside or are they outside? Make a decision. It's totally up to you. If they're outside, there's probably some amount of wind. So consider the environment and location and time of day and weather and that kind of stuff when you are animating even something as simple as a breathing exercise. Now the last thing to keep in mind as we kind of wrap up the breathing part of this is that, you know, you may get a character to look like he's breathing, but he doesn't look like he's alive if you leave the face just dead. So whether you have him doing eye darts, whether you have him looking around, whether you have him yawning or whatever, maybe he's talking while he's breathing, maybe you already have acting and you're just using the breathing to plus it. Regardless, the difference between this and this should be pretty clear. One of them has, I mean, obviously he's looking around, but you should feel a lot more life from the character in this state than you did before. And if you don't, then I didn't do a good enough job. One little detail that I do want to point out, since this is a close-up shot, look really closely at his eyes. When he blinks and looks away, do you guys notice anything about the pupils? I'll have to go here. It's really quick, it's really subtle. You would probably never need to do this unless you were really close up, but I actually decided to have, when he blinks, the size of his pupil, if you look at the size of his pupil, hopefully you can tell. <laughs> um, he closes his eyes, his pupils dilate, they get bigger because there's less light when he closes his eyes and he opens and the pupils shrink again. They actually do a slight uh, overshoot as well. They go small and big. It's a very small and subtle detail that may not have been necessary, but I felt really good about adding it. And it was just something that I added in that polish process that I was like, oh yeah, this is good. No one's gonna notice this especially at the distance that the shot's supposed to be viewed from, but I thought it would add to that feeling of the character just feels real for some reason. So really think about all these different things whenever you get a chance to add to your work and to make this character feel that even though he's not doing much, he's very much still alive. So I hope that was helpful. And if you have more questions, again, drop them in the comments below or jump over on Discord. I'm in Discord a lot more than I'm in the comments. So if you wanna have a conversation with me, with other artists, Discord's a great place to be. Or three days a week over on Twitch, I'm doing this kind of stuff live. I do a ton of this type of like short animation stuff over on Twitch. Links below for everything. Or if you want me to get in really deep with your shot and help you kind of work through some stuff, that's what the Patreon tutoring is for. But hopefully this video helped to overcome something that I struggle with a lot as a student, which was how do you have a character do something while doing nothing and not just die on screen? There's lots of other stuff I could talk about, moving holds, other options besides just breathing and this type of an idol. We'll get to that in the future. But for now, thanks so much for watching this video. Leave it a thumbs up if it was helpful. Share it with someone who could use it. Subscribe and turn on that notification bell in case you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video.